And aloha, and how you doing? Welcome to Hibachi Talk. Gordo the Tech's out here. I'm, I'm really excited about today's show. It's just awesome for a couple of reasons. One is Andrew's finally back. Hey, Andrew everybody. The, Andrew the security guy is here. How you doing? And, um, and my mentor, back. Kayla Rosenfeld, is here, who yes. got me into this Started industry. All this. And has helped me make all these nine millions of dollars over the past <laughs> number of years. Yeah, that's what I'm good for. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Kayla. Yeah. And you have some, a great story to tell. I'm looking forward to that. So please, grab yourself a libation, pull up a chair, and join us for the next few minutes Cheers. of Hibachi Talk. Oh, we didn't give you a yeah. call. Yeah. Well, we're, we're on, we're she's on, going, on, we're, she's we're, going bottle. We're cutting back on costs. <laughs> Anyway, Kayla, we, so we start uh, every show with you know, a little bit of background on our guests and so on. We ask you like, where you went to school and, and, and such and, then, and, and so on. So where did you go to school? Start where did you grow up? from and age five. Well, okay, so... Um, <laughs> That's about a week ago. I, I have a mixed background. Um, most of my... I grew up in Simsbury, Connecticut, but my dad was a Navy dentist, so the first few years oh. of my life I lived in Okinawa. Wow. One of the naval bases there. Um, so when we were, I was about four or five, we came back to Connecticut, and then as my teen years, I lived in Israel, and I'm a resident of Israel to this day. Oh, wow. happy Passover. Uh, yes, thank you I know, you very the much. freedom from slavery. Yeah. I'm, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. <laughs> um, and then I uh, spent the rest of my time in Simsbury, Connecticut, where I did graduate high school. And then um, college, I went to State University New York System, okay. where I got a degree in Fish and Wildlife Technology. Then I came to Honolulu um, at the whim of some friends who offered me a job and a place to live. That and helps. I, that helps, yeah. So I was on Maui for a couple years working in the marine um, tourism industry. And then um, I applied for scholarship while I was doing that, and I ended up at UH Manoa, and I got my uh, bachelor's degree in environmental journalism there at UH Manoa. Oh, wow. Oh, journalism. Major. Environmental now, journalism. Now, and now and now you said something about fish technology? Fish and wildlife fish technology. technology. Right. What the hell could that possibly be? <laughs> so it'd be like, you know, on the mainland, you've got freshwater streams, and okay. you want to you wanna figure out what the population of the different fish are, so you would... Po sample that, sample um, wildlife in the forest, also what's the alkaline or pH of water, okay. so th that technology of fish and wildlife. So I got, this is, you're going to slap me after this, is gefilte fish really a fish? Gefilte fish <laughs> is a combination of white fishes put together. Together, to, yes. in a stew or something. Well, it, it's in a, in a ball. In like a, ball, a fish ball. Like a, like a matzo ball or in something like a that. A fish ball. A fish ball, okay, yeah. like, like haggis. <laughs> Yes. From where I come yeah, from. Our version of hacking. <laughs> <laughs> so I got, and I also got to say, look, um, when I first got, and Jay Fidel, too, we got to mention this. Jay Fidel and I got involved with you when you were with Hawaii Public Radio. Correct. And how long were you there? I was there for 11 and a half years. And you were, um, in what role? I was a news director there. Um, started out as a reporter, and then I worked my way up to news director. And in that capacity, of course, I built. Um, you know, not of course, in my capacity. <laughs> I built an award-winning news department for which I am extremely proud yeah. uh, and it's still going. So, yeah. And they're doing great, great stuff there. Um, and then also while I was there, I had the opportunity to work on talk shows, which is where you and Jay came in. Yeah. And I will tell you, one of my finest moments was <laughs> launching Think Tech Hawaii on Hawaii Public Radio. Wow. Uh, there you go. Was. You know we're not paying you for this gig I know. at all. I know. But it was. You guys taught me a lot. You taught me a lot about getting along with people. You taught me a lot about tech, the world of tech, and what it means mm -hmm. and its different ways to be used. And I just I learned so much. And here we are all these years later. And there's still that connection and bond. And I mean, so how could it be wrong? Yeah, how oh, and we're still sharing information, exactly. right? I mean, the whole point, like you said, I didn't, I didn't, you were a journalism major, so that's awesome. Now I see, now I see the connection to communications and right. to, to come from that up to build a studio. That's amazing. Yeah, Great story. It, was, it was awesome. Yeah, right. yeah, it's and still, and even to this day, it still is fun. I mean, for me, it's fun. For Jay, it's fun. And, and Jay's doing it like, Full time in his quote unquote the retirement. The here are fabulous. I am so impressed. I'm so <laughs> proud that you guys are <laughs> keep sending to this in that funding, please. Yeah. yeah, send it in. Come on, folks, yeah. send it in. Yeah, you got to realize that every you know on all of these shows, we're all volunteers, right? Yes. Our guests are all coming in here. You're not getting paid or anything Correct. like that. You've got Correct. a story to tell, and and um, it's 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 what this community is all about. We really help each other. It's yeah, really yeah. the, the stories because you wouldn't get these stories. It's hard to get the one to many you know experience that you can you can deliver from here. So it's just amazing. But well, yeah, and we're all just a small community here trying everybody trying to make it in the best way that they can we have to depend on each other yeah mm -hmm. we really we really yeah. do so you know you, you, 
just your communications career is very dynamic, though. I mean, you've done a number of things because you were um, at, at Hawaii Public Radio, like you said, for those number of years, and then after that, you went to was it the state? I or was did. I took. <laughs> I did. Look at her face. I did. It was she, a huge she, learning experience. She, Let me say that I, I I got paid a lot to learn where I don't belong. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you go straight from college to HPR, or did you just did you? No, I had a break. I, I, um, I from college, I went into aquaculture at the Oceanic Institute. Oh, okay. And right then on. after that, I went to the Peace Corps. Oh. Oh. Wow. And then after Peace Corps, I came back, and that's where I ended up at Hawaii Public Radio. You decided to really start a, start working. <laughs> yeah. There was there was a stint at legislature there. The so dark side. I thought. Well, I've had it there too. Remember, we, we both went to the dark side. Yeah, we did. <laughs> We were happiest day of our lives is when we got out of the dark side. I, yeah, yeah. I learned a lot working for the state. So did I. And I think every, I think it's one of those things that every, you know, we don't have the draft. I'm so happy that, that Israel still has a draft. I wish we had still had the draft. I wish we could bring that back. But to replace it, if you don't want to do that, then let's, um, uh, two years of public service. Agreed. It's really important to understand how government works because yeah. if you don't understand that you don't know how to operate you don't know how to communicate and it's frustrating because you can't get things done even yeah. when you know how things work you can't get things done so at least if you've got the knowledge it 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 helps it really it really yeah. really helps well, I, I mean what but they're not getting much done i mean is it, i just wanted i don't know what did you figure somehow that they need to learn back maybe you need to go back and teach you know my my personal opinion, without being disrespectful, is, um, and this comes from being a journalist, the state needs to learn to communicate mm. clearly and not try to hide things. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, you know, cover things in non-communication that's supposed to be communication. You know, mm. that, was, that was my biggest frustration. Being a journalist, details and information are important to me, and I couldn't do that. Yeah, the wordsmithing, wow, that right? Something. The wordsmithing. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. It's, it was, it's just what they would do to change a certain word. And is right? it all about political positioning it's and about posturing? It's political positioning and, you know. and when something is, is uh, acceptable to be released, never mind the fact that it should be released, but when is the best time to release yeah. it mm. and the wordsmithing. And, so, yeah, I it, see. it was a challenge. And, wow. you were, and you were in the media side. So, you were, you know, let's go back, too, because so you went on the HBR side. So, you had to deal with it from... That side. Trying to pull information. Pulling that stuff out. So you got to experience all of that. Yeah, and that was the other challenge is being a public information officer for the Department of Human Services, welfare, child abuse, food stamps, and elder abuse. Mm. Um, so being a public information officer for that and having to take questions from reporters. Yeah. So, right, these were my colleagues that I then mm -hmm. had to stonewall, essentially. <laughs> you know, and Did they know you were doing it? Did they know I was You and I are never going to get our jobs no, back. Right. 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 Just, right. just so you know. Yeah, you're, right. you're just telling the whole story here, so this is a Yeah, thing. so did they know that? Yeah. I mean, Kaoki Kerr once said to me, come on, Kayla, you know how this works. Give, it, give me the information. And I was like, but I can't. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, Kiyoki, for laying me straight, you know. I know. And thanks to you, too, because I got to know, like, Kiyoki and all those players before I got into the dark side. And then when I'd see them, they'd have that smile on their face, and they'd go like, what, what do you want? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it isn't going to happen. Exactly. Oh, what an experience. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. But, but it gave me a good foundation to jump off into other things, and yeah. I'm grateful for yeah, it. Yeah, and, and when we get to the second half of the show, we're talking about, I love this shirt, by the way. Thank you very much. Thanks for wearing Build it. Aloha, yeah. So in the second half of the show, we're going to kind of get into this, this really cool new stuff here. But i got to ask you a question. Like, um, um, women in the industry, in the communications industry, I mean, yep. I, you see it on television and those kinds of things. So has it blossomed? Has it grown? Or what's, what, what's your, your view of how it's ha what's happening? My view is that women have always been in communications and always in the communications industry, but we've been in the backside of things. You okay. know, the, the men have been the face. Now technology has sort of leveled the playing field mm. in that women have access to technology and can put themselves in the front. Mm. And um, you can also, in some cases, not indicate that you're female and go ahead and do what you're doing, mm -hmm. use a pseudonym, and people don't know, so you're still getting your, your word you're out there. You're still getting the word out. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've noticed that really, really yeah, cool so, stuff. Yeah, so technology has been a huge boon for women in, in, in yeah. communications. Awesome, awesome. So I'm trying to keep our timing um, set. You have a security minute, We probably. have a few minutes. Oh, yeah, quick. Okay, why don't you give us a security well, minute? I'll do it when we come back, though. Oh, oh, that's right. Okay, see ya. There's a time slot. Yeah, you're the one that's been away, and I forgot how the program works. <laughs> 
we need that. We need that uh, so, camera angle. Okay, so let's so let's let's come back on this um, uh, the the women in the industry and, and the technology and so on because I even see it now. Now the other day there, and this is not not so much communications, but an uh, NBA basketball game had a woman referee. Wow. And I went, whoa. And I never noticed it. My wife did. She went, oh, that's a woman referee. To, wow. Well, we, and, and I said, there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with it, but it's our mindsets have still, we're still in this day and age thinking that women shouldn't yeah. be homogeneous within all these, with all these industries. Is it, is it still, you think, tough for? In certain industries, sports is still, you know, I mean, if you think about where the money in sports is, mm -hmm. it's not women's sports. Yeah, it's not mm -hmm. the women's NBA, you know, for sure. Yeah, I mean, and the women's WNBA. Look at the women's soccer, right? Like, yeah, you know, the so WNBA, that. which I followed from the very beginning, um, we used to call the local newspaper and say, why aren't their stats being published? When yeah. you've got high school, you know, local high school stuff being published, why can't you publish professional women's basketball? Yeah. You know, so we, we complain to that yeah. a lot. And, 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 and I think we should. We, you know, Andrew and I talk about this in the tech industry. There's not 30, was it 30 percent? Or less. Or less. Of, but it's, it is growing. It's I mean, growing, but slow. Stem, you know, it's just, yeah, it's, the need's there. The, and it, what's, what I find just, I think, it's difficult for me to understand is because the roles are there, the, the, the work's being done, but even the salaries aren't equal yet. Yeah. I mean, I just don't understand these things. Like, it's, it's just a, some old school mindset that's, that's exactly got to change. You know, it's changing, but it needs to it's, just change, you know. It's happening. So yeah, tell me, um, in, you know, in, in, in the career that you've had, um, what are some, give me a couple of high points, you know, or one high point about things that you got to be involved in and participated in. No, the reason I want to ask this is because I'm hoping that some of the viewers are watching this and like, well, I might want to get into that career because of these kinds of opportunities that come. Well, I'd say um, public radio was definitely a high point in my career. Mm -hmm. And it, it taught me how to communicate, ask questions, not be afraid to ask questions. And I liked that, that I could, you know, sort of drop the, the, the barrier because of who I was representing and what mm -hmm. my job was, I could ask questions. And that felt good. It empowered me. Mm. It really f empowered me. Um, and then also the opportunity to focus on a particular story and make that a point of interest or high profile, having that power to do that also was really invigorating and, and not abusing it, you know, mm -hmm. so, so being humble in the process as well. Oh, um, we haven't learned that yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Last few years have taught me to be humble. I'll work on it. Yeah. Um, so that was really exciting. And then um, working with the state, I wouldn't call it a highlight, but it was a huge learning experience, and I appreciate that, that opportunity. And then um, going out on my own with Wild Rose Communications, um, I, I've had some, a couple of really good experiences where I got to go to India with the East West Center. Mm. Um, I got to be part of the World Conservation Congress here uh, that was here last mm. September. Wow. I got to create a, a workshop for that. So that was really exciting. And then um, having opportunities just to, to talk like with folks like, you know, just talk and talk story. story. Hibachi kind of talk. Hibachi talk, yeah. talk. Because of the things that I've done, I received great invitations yeah. like this. And Wild well, Rose Communications, I mean, that's you. You started that that's up. That's correct. That's yours. I mean, yep. go out on your own. Yep. That's, that's high, high, high risk. risk. High, high risk, risk, high reward. Can we say that again? High, high risk. risk. High yes. risk. High risk. And hopefully a reward. Good yes, on you. Yes, I think so. I yeah. think so. Yeah, and I've gone to your website, and um, I like the way you set it up. There's some really cool things on uh, you. that you've got happening on Thanks. there. Thanks. I, I registered, and you thank me for I signing did. up. I did. I always get so excited when I have people <laughs> register. It's so nice. It's great. So you must be watching it all the time. You, you got to go check it out, man. It's pretty, pretty, I'll pretty do cool. That. It's very, very Wild good. Rose on the break, watch yeah. his um, his lovely bride is the is the head of his company. So it's a woman owned. Uh, a woman owned. A woman owned. The whole the whole thing's woman owned. Trust it's me. Woman owned small, small business. So she's. That's why you're so successful. That's that's what I claim. <laughs> yeah, okay. She's successful. You're just kind of hanging out. She gives you time to do presentations. Uh, uh, she lets me come here. Yeah. So, yeah, but th things that you, you taught me when you were there, like one of the things you said to me one day, which really is, it's resounded in my head forever, and even sitting on the show, is that you said the moment you're on the microphone or the moment you're front of, in front of the camera, you become the perceived expert. Correct. That's one of the lines you gave me, that, and I went, then I better be careful with what I say. Right? Exactly. Because if I don't know what I'm talking about, then exactly. I better say I don't know what I'm talking about or just don't talk about it. Correct. So it's an We let Angus talk about that stuff. <laughs> yeah. And he's not even an expert at anything. So, but that's, that, I think that's a, 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 a profound piece of information. And I wish all newscasters 
yeah. around, th around this country would just keep that one little thing is you're a perceived expert. Exactly. And when they go allegedly or the, you know they try to puff up stories and so on, they're well, that, that's the 24-hour news thing that happened, right? So they're creating all the time, right? So they're, they're trying yeah, to they keep you watching time. for yeah. hours. No, they, didn't, they didn't have 24-hour news when you first got into the industry, Not did they? Not when I first got into, got into it. Got into it, right? No, so that was more like in the early two mid-2000s. Yeah, and yeah. They, they told yeah. Ted he was crazy. Like, nobody's going to watch the news, news all day. Ted. Well, no one will unless you start to embellish on it. Yeah, because right. it's... Yeah, it's not quite news it's yet, or it's evolving, you know, or whatever. And that's actually one of the reasons I found myself sort of overwhelmed by the news industry is because it was becoming twenty four seven, and it wasn't just putting your story out. You had to put your story out on different platforms, and you know, repurpose it for this and repurpose mm -hmm. it for that. And then you know, like you're you're lost in doing that, and you no longer have the passion for the story yeah. and the work that you're doing. Yeah. And it just became really overwhelming. And that yeah. was one of the reasons I, I ended up moving on. Cool. Well, we're going to take a short break, but i got to tell you, the, the, um, I notes. went and looked something up because I, like like I like to jab you because you're going to jab me back I real am. hard. You know so it. I have a little slide here about the three top uh, forms of communication, oh, right? So, okay. And I think number one is Twitter. Number well, two is the telephone. Form. The last one is tell a woman. Uh -huh. <laughs> All the three fastest forms. Okay. Fastest forms. Yeah, right. You know, well, I don't know. I know some pretty gabby men, so you know, yeah. I can cut some slack on that. Tell, right here. If you, if yeah. you just tell it on a bocce talk, the word will spread there quickly. There you go. Yeah, to all of our viewers. Anyway, we're going to take a, a little break. We'll be back in a minute. And then we're going to talk about some cool stuff that Kayla's working on now. Okay, we'll see you in a minute. Hi everyone, Ted Rolson here, host of our Think Tech show, Where the Drone Leads. And a lot of you, of course, have been setting your clocks at uh, uh, 4 o'clock on Friday so that you can make sure you see our show. It's now changed. It's now going to be at noon on Thursdays. Noon on Thursdays, new standard time for Where the Drone Leads. And Where the Drone Leads is to systems like this, capabilities that we're using here in Hawaii these days. And we need you to pay attention to this, be part of it. So see you at noon on Thursdays. Hi, this is uh, Jane Sugimura. I'm the co-host for Condo Insider, and we're on Think Tech Hawaii every Thursday at 3 o'clock, and we're here to talk about uh, condominium living and uh, issues that affect condominium residents and owners, and I hope you'll join us every week on Thursday. Aloha. Hello, this is Martin Despang. Please join me on my new show, Humane Architecture, like the one in the back that you see by architect David Rockwood. The show is going to be on Tuesdays, 5 p.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii in downtown Honolulu. See you then. Aloha Kako. I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to navigate the journey with us. We are here every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. and we really want you to be with us where we look at the options and choices of end-of-life care. Aloha. Hey, aloha everybody and welcome back to Hibachi Talk. Got a quick security minute for you. Uh, your Windows computers aren't very secure this weekend. Our friends the shadow brokers who are you know launching all this uh, allegedly uh, weaponized um, uh, malware that they got from the NSA um, uh, they, they put out a really big dump today of a lot of Windows exploits up through Windows 8 and some Windows Server 2012. It's going to take Microsoft a while to filter through. There's a lot of code there, um, but these are valid exploits, so be careful with your Windows PCs next few days. That's my warning. Uh, Angus. Welcome back, buddy. What you got for us? How you doing, Andrew? Very well, sir. Kayla, it's so nice to see you. Last. Nice to meet you, Angus. Yeah, you're such a sweetie. Thanks. You know, Gordon and I always talked a lot of nice things about you. I'm so glad. And finally <laughs> get to meet you. It's really nice. And yeah, I got a wee gadget this week. You know, usually I'm complaining about government, but I got a wee bit tired. So, anyway, <laughs> and we're talking about communication, so I wanted to go thematic. So All I went right. thematic, and there's this cool new device coming up, and they've been testing it in Hawaii. It's called, it's called E. And you wear it around your neck, like a little fob. And so I walk up to the Japanese lassies and I say, Hi there, lassie, how are you doing? And guess what it does? It translates it to Japanese. Oh, it's okay. It's awesome. The problem is it, it understands English, but it doesn't understand Scotland. So <laughs> I, I, I have a real challenge with that. Ah, But anyway, that's, that's the gadget of the week. Right on. Do they rent them or buy them? Uh, you can buy them. And I'll wait for the net or the east They're testing them in Hawaii. Oh, I see. So we'll get, right I, I'm going to get one. I'll be That's using fine. it. fine. You you're talking to the tourists, are you? Oh, yeah, you know me. How uh, would I know that? <laughs> you have a wild idea. <laughs> anyway, that's, that's my guys of the week. And like I always say at the end of your show, or every, not end of show, end of every week, it's like, let your wind go free wherever you be. Aloha. All 
Right on. Angus always got a gadget for us. So if you're not too good with your Japanese interpretation, I don't know if it comes in multiple languages, but maybe you get out and try one out if you see one around town. We're back with Kayla. Kayla, glad to have you. Thank you um, so much. I think we're going to learn a little bit about your more recent projects. We've gotten a good dose of uh, what you've been up to uh, prior to now, so mm -hmm. let's uh, let's hear about it. So yeah, we got we have, we have a graphic and, and, oh, do and we? Um, yeah. Before we do the graphic, okay, if before I may. you please. Okay, so um, Gordon is wearing my uh, current occupation, Build Aloha. I'm All currently right. working for Habitat for Humanity. But how I got there is um, I am. A Vi AmeriCorps VISTA volunteer. Okay. AmeriCorps is the domestic Peace Corps. Oh. And then VISTA is volunteers in service to America. Okay. So through that capacity, um, there are about 60 of us throughout the state of Hawaii right now and uh, Saipan. And um, each of us is assigned to a different organization and um, capacity. So there's food sustainability, there's housing, there's literacy, there's financial literacy, to name the top four. Mm. So um, I'm assigned to housing, and my assignment is Habitat for Humanity here in uh, Kalihi. In Kalihi. Oh, right on. So VISTA is, a, uh, see, I didn't know this, so that's why we have this show. Yes. So VISTA is the local version of the Peace Corps. Or local, or national, national domestic. but it, so it's the domestic version of the Peace Corps. It's actually AmeriCorps is the domestic version, version of the Peace Corps, the Peace and Corps. then Vista has different programs underneath it. Okay, yeah. that's a good idea. Uh, well, I, see, I didn't even know. So anything across about this. across the country, there are hundreds and hundreds of Vista. Vista volunteers okay. doing, as I mentioned, food security and all those things that I mentioned. Okay, so so okay, so how do we get the word out then? How, well, this will be one way, but I mean. Um, how are you getting the word out? How are you communicating this to the nation that this is this, these, this exists? Well, um, last week there was um, a conference uh, bringing together all the uh, Vista volunteers and um, dignitaries who appreciate and know of us. So that was out. A lot of that was streamed live, and then we had the conference um, at the Hilton Hawaiian Village, and we had. Um, heads of local businesses come and speak with us and do different workshops and things like that. But primarily, it's up to us as the Vista volunteers yeah. to talk about what we're doing. So, how, how big's the membership? Do you have an idea? Um, I know there are several hundred of us across the country right now. Okay. And we work, Vista is a one year uh, service, so each of us have a one year term. Compared to the International Peace Corps, it's a two-year term. Oh, okay. So, so we're just one-year term. Oh, so it's the same model as the Peace Corps, but in the, in this country. Yeah, for inter internal projects. For so, internal and projects. So with, with uh, Habitat for Humanity, so are you, I see Build Aloha, so are you supplying materials, labor? What, what, what's your, what are you... What do you do, actually do? Okay, so um, <laughs> just one more thing about VISTA. So yeah. like the Peace Corps itself, people from around the country um, are placed in different communities. So like there's a young lady working right now at Pali Kalihi Palama Health Center. Oh, yeah. She's there from Minnesota. Oh, wow. Okay, so here's a, here's a young woman who is going to be working with the Micronesian population, right? So yeah. it's the domestic version of what you would do on an international awesome. capacity. All right, so in terms of what I do at Habitat for Humanity, um, I'm there primarily as, um, in my capacity, as a communications consultant, but okay. I'm not there as a consultant. I'm there as a VISTA volunteer. Oh. And my job is to help them um, increase their brand recognition okay. because um, Habitat for Humanity gets mixed up with Habilitat, for mm -hmm. example. Oh, yes. Sure. Okay, so Habitat, Habitat is housing. Yep. Habilitat is drug rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. Okay, but okay. for some reason, people tend to mix that up. I did. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing is, is um, Habitat for Humanity uh, has a primary revenue stream through what we call the ReStore. And the ReStore is a, a donation warehouse where oh. anybody can donate materials, and then those materials are sold, and the proceeds go to building homes for families that qualify for the program. Oh, awesome. So, okay. I, so I've... Started to see some of these restores pop up. We have one in Waimea on the Big Island. Right now, there's seven in Hawaii. There's seven in Hawaii. Now, the thing that made it a challenge for me is they put it into an old Goodwill place. Okay. So I thought they had just rebanded Goodwill. Oh. So my yeah. mind was just thinking, oh, I guess Goodwill's changing their name. Oh. Because well, I we'll wasn't. Have to talk about. Yeah. That. So I, I, so when after we talked, I went. Oh, and I bought stuff from there because I'm building a house up there, and they had light bulbs and. Yep. I mean, they don't just sell um, uh, 
oh, construction really? stuff, but oh. they can sell. There's all kinds. There's yeah, dishes. Yeah, gently there's used furniture, housewares. Oh, um, I if, oh, if I didn't a know that. construction okay. company is doing a project and they've leftover materials, donate it to the restore. You get a tax write-off. We sell it. We make money and are able to house people. Yeah, they had cable. I mean, they had boxes of cable. Wire. Yeah, Tiles. Well. We had um, Schofield Inn donated 20,000 square feet of laminate flooring. Whirlpool has donated at least 60 new appliances. Wow, that's um, awesome. We had uh, Mar Mal Malarkey. Malarkey, Malarkey. Um, Roofing donated shingles. Wow. And, then, and so it's those kinds of corporate donations, you know, that make a huge difference. But then the, the general public can come and donate anything as and, well. And what, now, those, those materials that get donated, they are, can the general public purchase those? Or are they going to be focused on no, affordable housing? No, it's for housing? the general public. It's for the general public. Right, and um, then what the, the proceeds from those sales get turned over to housing funds. Oh. Gotcha. Okay. Right. Wow! Interesting. So, wow! This is kind of this is like this, this is a good idea. I feel like this is breaking news because oh. I see them around, but we've never I never yeah. seen anyone t on. So there's yeah. two on Oahu. There's two restores on Oahu. The one in Honolulu, which is on Austin Street in okay. Kalihi Tamashiro Market, across from Tamashiro's okay. Market. There's Austin Lane, and it's down a little dead end. Um, and one of the things we want to do is find a better location. Yeah, you need, some, you need some street visibility. We do need some street visibility. So that's one of the things I'm hoping to, um, you know, appeal to your listeners and viewers is if you're in real estate or construction and you know of a, a warehouse, maybe 10,000 square feet, we're looking for that kind of space so that we can expand and, you know, help serve the community, but also expand our opportunities to, to, make, mm. our, to make ourselves known. Right. Um, and then the other... The other one is in um, Campbell Industrial Park. Okay. Serves Leeward a well. Okay, cool. Now we're down to one minute, so we're going to give you uh, 30 seconds to get your final message across that you, you want to get. I know it's like, oh my God, you better. You, um, you finished this, you went through this fa fast. Didn't it go through fast? <laughs> um, yeah, I guess it is. Maybe you should throw that graphic up. Maybe. Yeah, let's throw the graphic up. So that um, the, if you are a, um, say, a family that's in need of decent, low income housing, if you look starting from my left side of the screen, um, you go through an application process and you're vetted for your ability to um, not default on a 0% loan, mm -hmm. um, your ability to have $1,000 to cover basic materials and to provide sweat equity because part of the program is that partner families must provide sweat equity. I like it. That's why the, po the cost of their, their cost of the project is so low. So, um, and I'll, 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 I'm going to put this graphic on the Hibachi Talk website. I'll put that up awesome. so it'll be there. And it, it, obviously, it's going to be on the show. And unfortunately, I cut the bottom off a little bit. It just says Habitat for Humanity, but we got that. And it's all about building Aloha. It's building Aloha. It's all about building Aloha. This is pretty cool. Kayla, it's so great to have it's you on this show. It's awesome, you. awesome. And uh, no guest goes unrewarded. Okay, here it is. Here is our autographed solo cup. You can, um, uh, I don't want to, I don't expect to see this getting. For set up the restore. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to keep that on my desk. There you, oh yeah, there for sure. Number 113 in the wow, series. Wow, very cool. All right, so. Very cool. I'm honored. Thank yeah, you. Uh, thank you, Kayla. And we'll have you on the show again because I think we got yeah, another we story to keep up on the yeah, progress. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That'd be great. That'd be great. Andrew and, and Gordo, thanks. That's awesome. And, and don't forget about the windows. Leave your machines off this weekend. I think might be a good thing. Uh, wait for some updates. And like we say at the end of every show, one, two, three. How, How you doing? doing?